If you've been following along with the blog, you now have enough functionality built to start using UDK battle maps in your games. So in this video, I want to show how quickly you can build a map for a session. We average two encounters per session, so this will be a simple two-room map. So I'm going to start off with a four by six room, uh, and this will be where uh, some st uh, set of staircases will lead down into the main part of our room. Okay, and then I'm going to build our 8x8 room. Uh, I'm, I'm ta speaking in uh, grid squares, but the map I'm building, we actually found that units of 128 by 128 is a nice equivalent to a 1x1 one one square. And you'll find that uh, a lot of the, the objects and models in the game work really well with that um, that size. So 256, 128, this will be a nice little uh, doorway entrance between the two rooms. And then finally our final room will be another 8x8 eight eight room. Okay, we have our rooms built. Now let's put some texture on it. So I'm just going to search in the content browser for rock. Material. There's a nice simple one in here. There we go, that'll work fairly well. I'm going to select all the services and apply that. Now that doesn't look really good, so we're going to change our scaling. Let's make it there, that looks good, that looks a lot better. Okay, so now we have our two rooms, now we need a staircase. So let's make this 32. We'll make the step width um, two squares wide, minus our inner radius. That would be 256. Make it uh, 16 steps, but only 12. Let's flip it backwards. There we go. And we'll put this right in the front. There we go. So that'll be a nice little staircase leading down. Perfect. Okay. So now we have that. Now we need a... We'll stick our player start right in here. Because uh, the map needs a place to begin. We'll... Uh, let's add a nice light right here. Point light. Um, yeah, we don't want to reveal too much of our other room yet, so we'll kind of move it to the beginning. Highlight the stairs a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now we need to build our doors, and here's where you'll find that the uh, the models work really well. So I'm going to grab a door. Oops, it's a static mesh. Not a skeletal one. There's our door. I'm going to drop that door right here. Now we need to add it as an interp actor instead of a static mesh because we're actually going to wind up moving it. Now interestingly, they put the pivot point for the door, uh, for the hinge in the uh, on the inside of the door instead of the outside. So we're going to move this pivot point. There we go, right there. Okay, we'll line this up with our little entrance room. And uh, see how well that door works? We didn't change the size at all, and it fits just perfect in a 128 by 128 square. So now we're going to add the other side. There we go. Now we want to get Kismet involved because we want to actually be able to uh, swing these doors open. So I'm going to add a trigger right here. And uh, I like to make these triggers nice and big because you don't want to be rolling around looking for them or hunting for pixels whenever you're actually playing. So I put it in a spot that I'll easily remember where it is 
and make it nice and big. That's good enough. Okay, so now let's animate our door. So we want to start a new touch event with this trigger. And we want to create a new matinee. And when that, when we activate our trigger, we want to swing these doors open. All right, let's get that out of the way. All right, we're gonna make an empty group for the left door. Add a movement track. All right, now, this thing's kind of long. We, we want it to swing kind of quick. We don't want it to take up a whole bunch of time having them watch animations. So we're going to make this one second long. But about three-fourths of a second, we're going to swing the door really wide. Wider than uh, we would normally have it. And then that last second, we want it to... Uh, Come back a little bit. About like that. There we go. I add our second group for the right door. Add a movement track for it. Okay, about the same place, but three-fourths of a second. We want to add another keyframe. We want to swing that really wide. And then at the, at the end, we'll have it bounce back just a little bit. There we go. And you'll see what, this, what effect this produces. So we activate our trigger. Ah, oops, I messed up a keyframe. Right, I'll just delete that real quick. We'll add, let's do this over. I'll add another keyframe, swing it wide. Move to the end, swing it back. There we go, now let's try that. Okay, that's more like what we were looking for. Okay, so now we got a trigger that's going to open our doors, and we want a we want to hide this room when they when we're first showing them out because we only want them to see the first room that they're going to fight in. But when we open the door, we want to reveal the second room as the door swing open. So we're going to add another light, but we're going to add a toggleable point light. There we go. We'll add that right in here. There we go. Okay. So now let's make it lit so we can see what our light is going to do for us. Let's, um, let's bring that in just a little bit. And then let's change the color. We'll make it a ominous color. Give it a nice, nice red tint to it as if there's a evil bad guy in here. Okay, good enough. All right. All right. And then we actually want to turn this light off. And then back in Kismet. We will add a new action, a toggle action, and then we're going to toggle our light on whenever we activate the trigger. All right, so our touch event is going to turn on our light. Perfect. Okay, so that's it. So we got two rooms. We got a stairs leading down, a light on to reveal our first room, a trigger to open the doors and reveal our second room. So I'm going to pause the video here, I'm going to do a build, open it up in the front end and compile it, and then uh, I'll show you the map in-game. Okay, so here's our map after, after building, saving, and uh, packaging or cooking in uh, front end. 
Now we're running it, so here we have our map. We've got our nice staircase here, light, our first little room. Imagine this projected onto your table from your projector. Uh, so we can turn on our grid. We said it was going to be a 4x6. The entrance was 4x6, and our second room here was 8x8. Eight eight. So here we have 6 squares by 4 squares and 8x8. Eight eight. And then uh, after they finish the combat in this first room and they're ready to move on to the second, I float my cursor over where I know this trigger is, and you can see that uh, up here in the object class it shows trigger. And so I'm going to hit my I key to activate it, and there's the door swing open, and the light turns on, and there's our second room. That's it.